pains me to say this, but up until a couple of weeks ago when a young girl was born, and that was the first child who was born on the island for three years. So, you know, you do the maths in that, it doesn't look good long term. There's no better place to live than Iron Moor, but we have been decimated by immigration. I think, like a lot of other Iron Moor people, we have this mad hankering to get back home. We're very top heavy with elderly people. About 45% of the population is over the age of 65. The biggest silence I hear on Iron Moor is the sound of children. And it's only when you don't have it, the silence is deafening. You chat to Irish people, and they are very proud of where they come from, and islanders are probably even prouder. As an islander, you never really leave. The draw is always there. Leaving home has always been a dream, but the fundamentals of connectivity for my line of work just made it unfortunately impossible. How's it going, Dara? Hey, Matt, how are you? My company develops high-end educational games and immersive environments. I need secure, fast, reliable connectivity. When I first really started trying to work back here, the first probably three days, I almost went out of my mind. I was getting about five to 10 minutes of connectivity up until about nine o'clock. You're always slightly nervous when you wake up in the morning whether there's gonna be connectivity there or not. The whole thought process around this is to try and bring the connectivity to the island, to try and generate some employment, bring people back to the islands. A digital hub was something that we thought would be a great asset to the community because it would be a shared workspace and they can do anything in any job from that space. I'm in London paying a fortune for just the cost of living. So if I can do that in Arnmore, where the cost of living is a fraction and I have no commute, that's, from my perspective, is just fantastic. We can help. We can do something to make a change here. So we're going to use a technology called a wireless lease line. It's essentially a microwave link that goes from the hub all the way back to one of our masts, which is back in Derry Bag and Donegal. I've described it to the guys here as like having your own M50 to drive to work on, and there's no other cars, it's just you. The opportunities for it are massive, and I don't think we're putting too fine a point on it when we say that this connection is the electrification of the 21st century. It's that big a thing for us. The digital hub is critical to the island's future, and it means people working for tech companies like mine can work here. We're on an island here in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, but as far as a person who's at work goes, you could work here just as easily as you could in Dublin or New York or London. This is the first offshore digital hub in the country, and that in itself is a big thing. If we can do this on our own war, you can do this anywhere. The most connected island on the planet is gonna be a serious boast for us. When you can see, you know, 20 children coming in here who are all national school age, they're the future. When children got the certain age of leaving school, they had to go and find work. And that young bunch of children who were in there today might never have to leave. This isn't a quick fix, this isn't an overnight thing. I just love to know that the technologies we've put in place have had the desired effect. I'd love to see loads of the houses that are not full at the moment be full. I'd love to hear more kids running around in the island. My ship. Technology is just the secondary part of this. This is really genuinely about people and hopefully changing people's lives. We had this conversation five years ago, I said, how can technology produce babies? <laughs> it's going to do it on this island. I know I'm going to hear them children, and I know that this island will be back to what it once was. Great place to call home.